Good evening everyone, let's start right ahead. I continue my databases exploration and uh, today I spent my learning time on uh, Neo4j and RangoDB. So I will be telling you about those these two databases and I will start with RangoDB. I was reading their documentation and my focus was on how does their clustering system works and how is it organized. So first thing to mention is that it's CP oriented, so it's uh, consistent and partition tolerated, as you maybe seen my previous video, I was talking more about it. So uh, they prefer consistency over availability, as you may understand from this abbreviation. They distinguish four, four different types, different roles in their system. They are agents, coordinators, primary database services and secondary database services. So I will tell briefly about each of them. First one is agents and they're not accessible from the outside world so ca clients cannot reach them they are used for configuration for storing the configuration and for orchestrating the synchronization uh, processes in your cluster also it's worth to mention that they use raft consensus algorithm to ensure fault tolerance and this algorithm itself deserves its own video so i won't be talking about it today at all the second type of instances they have are coordinators and as the opposite of agents they are accessible from the outside from your clients and they are actually the entry point of your clients they like coordinate the internal routing the third type is primary database servers and in them RangoDB actually stores the data so they host shards of data and uh, they usually use synchronous replication. Also it's good to know that they are not accessible from the outside, they can be accessed only through coordinators. And the fourth type, for fourth role is secondary DB servers and uh, as you may get it from the name, they are attached to particular primary database servers and uh, they actually use asynchronous replication and they have eventual consistency in result. Another interesting thing I found today in RangoDB documentation is uh, Fox Microservices Framework. I didn't really dive deep, but it looks like uh, their solution for building Node.js REST APIs for microservices using, the, uh, using RangoDB as a persistence level. And they also support GraphQL, which is uh, really interesting in nowadays. By the way, I cannot neither recommend or not recommend it to you because I don't have any hands-on experience with it. I didn't touch, I even didn't really read their documentation thoroughly about this topic. If you have such experience or maybe just a little bit broader knowledge than me, feel free to, to drop me a message. Okay, let's move on. The second thing I propose to you is Neo4j and I didn't really read anything new about Neo4j, almost didn't read, uh, I was playing around with it. As I mentioned in one of my previous videos, they have like pre-built datasets which you can uh, which you can download, which you can use and to, to, to just go wild there to explore it, to, to investigate different patterns and or just to try their uh, query language or their interface. So today I decided that it's the right day to try it's a Monday, hard day, it's a day for new database, checking out, trying out. So I signed in, I signed up for their sandbox and I picked one data set which is uh, Panama Papers. And what I can tell is that I am really impressed. Honestly, I'm mostly impressed because of data which I found there. Because I found few very famous uh, politicians and businessmen from my country in this database, in this data set. And just to remind you what Panama Papers are, because for example, I missed this when it was when they were just uh, open, just disclosed. Panama Papers are a scandal documents, document log, documents log from Panamian law company which is working with offshores. I suppose which 
were, I suppose, which was a work in the way of shores before this uh, disclosure. Nevertheless, here we are talking not about politics or business or economics, we're talking about tech. So let's move on to the tech part of, of my experimentation. I was really pleasant about how convenient, how smooth they made the process of starting new uh, sandbox with this predefined data set. It is literally just clicking a couple of buttons and voila! You have your data set ready for your exploration, ready for your experiments. And just to mention, I will include a link in the show notes so you can uh, you can go there and, and just play there. You don't need to pay anything, you don't even need to read tons of documentation. You can just sign up and you will get the console. Then you can explore it just by clicking hither and thither or reading like small pieces of documentation or just using their predefined queries. Also, after playing around uh, for about 15 minutes, I realized that their query language system is actually quite convenient and uh, even simpler than SQL, at least for, for that kind of queries. Because after that I tried to rewrite the same query uh, into SQL and realized that it, it requires from me uh, going to Google and checking the docs of of the SQL syntax of PostgreSQL syntax, for, for instance. Another cool thing is that they have very good auto-suggestion mechanism in their query builder and really gorgeous visualization tool where you really see these nodes, you can uh, expand them, you can shrink them, you can move them around to make your picture to be more uh, like readable. <laughs> Furthermore, it's worth to mention that uh, this data set is about one gigabyte of size and I was building a query for example it was very very simple query in cipher uh, but it, it will require like three four joins in uh, any SQL database so this query took me less than one second to, to query to perform and I think it's a quite good performance at least for sandbox Anyway, you probably expected I will mention some downsides, downsides as well. Otherwise, this uh, observation, this review won't be really wrapped up. So I have few for you. First of all, I wasn't been able to find any decent way to check in to check your database schema, like you would like to see in your like SQL or document-oriented database where you have tables or collections, and you can see. Maybe, okay, in NoSQL you won't see the really fields, the structure of your tables of your collections, but at least you can, you can observe your collections, at least the collections. But in this graph database I didn't find this possibility. And probably I'm just wrong about my vision of graph databases in general. Uh, I can assume that they don't really have any types of vertices. They have just vertices and they have different types of relations for example you have a uh, relation born in and it connects to nodes and you can understand just from the context that if the relation is a born in probably starter node is person and the end destination node is a city or country you see there's still some ambiguity uh, but I can assume that this is the way how Neo4j and Graph Database works work in general. I will have a small workshop and like a small presentation about my outcomes from Neo4j conference in my company for my colleagues, for my tech colleagues. And probably during the preparation to this presentation, I will discover this topic deeply I will discover this topic deeper and I will be able to tell you precise, more precisely what is going on there. But for now, at least at first glance, it was a bit inconvenient for me. However, I was kind of able to solve this my issue with their auto-suggestion tool. And this is my second downside I want to mention. Because their auto-suggestion auto -suggestion tool suggests you 
all the different fields you may have. For example, uh, you want to see the list of your possible fields for the node which contains person, but you will have not only persons uh, attributes there, you will have just all of them. And not only all the attributes, you will also have all the possible operations in the same auto-suggestion thing. Like you type person dot and you have all the like first name, last name things, you will have uh, attributes from all other nodes as well and also you will have some uh, operations like is equal or uh, to lowercase or something like this which is kind of weird by me and this is actually the list of all downsides I noticed during my like two-hour session of playing around with Neo4j but as I told you I will be, I will be preparing presentation for my colleagues, so probably during this time I will discover more downsides or more advantages and I will definitely share it with you. So stay tuned, don't forget to learn something new every day, to try out something new every day, to share your experience and uh, to get more and more knowledge and experience. See you all, have all the best!